good morning. Today we are going to be talking about solving log equations. And the lo to solve a log equation, you're going to need the power rule. So in my prior videos, I kept talking about how important the power rule is. And today we're going to see that. So I have attached this worksheet from eMath Instruction. I am going to make my own video and then I'm going to upload the author's video so you have two different perspectives to get yourself through this packet which says number 11 on the bottom but it's our lesson number five solving equations so let's begin you need your calculator gotta have your calculator and my eraser all right so lesson Five, solving log equations. Okay, so like I just said a moment ago, the most important thing you're going to need to be using now is the power rule. The power rule says if you have any kind of number or variable with an exponent and then you put a log on that expression, log means exponent and an exponent. Two exponents of multiplication. That's the power rule. So this would become b times the log of x. Now, this works with the common log, and this works with the natural log. So you saw when we were doing lesson four with the natural log and the value e, we would use the power rule, and we would get the same thing. So the exponent with the power rule comes down in front. Now, natural log is the, is the log used most often in life when solving um, word problems and financial problems. You can use either the natural log or the common log because you're gonna get the exact same answer. Uh, on this packet, it tells you that they want you to use the common log for exercise one, which is fine. Let's take a look at exercise one. Exercise one has 4 to the x is equal to 8. Now, if we go back to chapter 7, which we can absolutely do, that's the method of common bases. So this was chapter 7, method of common bases. That's when I said to you, here's the four, change it out for me. And somebody would say to me, okay, four is the same as two squared. All right, this is my four, but don't forget that there was also this X. So that means power rule. You now have an exponent raised to a power multiplication. Then I would say, okay, give me, there's an eight, change it out for me. And then somebody would correctly say two to the third. And then we would talk about the concept of equality. And if two sides are equal, they're the same. Bases are the same. Therefore, the exponents are the same. And so then x would become 3 halves. Yes, 1.5 works. 3 halves works as well. So this is chapter 7 method. Now let's just take this exact same problem and let's use a log. They say in the directions, common log, so I'll use this guy up here. If I put a common log on both sides, power rule, I now have x times the log of 4 is now equal to the log of 8. And then if I divide by the log of 4, because now I'm solving, I want x by himself. And then I have to type that into my calculator, which, again, you can even do this on your, 
and your cell phone calculator as long as you turn your calculator to the side but everybody should have by now downloaded a graphing calculator app because there's just certain things we can't do without this over time so now I have the log the key for on the first column log of 8 don't forget to close the parenthesis divided by the log of 4 and there I get 1.5 if I hit math enter enter there I am back at three halves so again just so you can see that more clearly so this is now three halves two methods chapter 7 method and this is now the chapter 8 method so again, just like I've said too many times, there's power in having options. So the more you know, the more you can do, works out quite well. Let's take a look at exercise two now. So exercise two says solve each of the following equations for x to um, the nearest hundredth, two decimal places. Because now you're going to see that 5 to the x and 18 can't be changed out. 5 prime numbers in lowest form, and 18 is not a perfect exponent like 8 was. So I can't change it out. But I can put a common log on both sides. <clears throat> and then power rule brings my exponent down in front. And then I can divide by the log of 5. And again, you're going to have to type that in on your calculator. You absolutely need to put in the log of 18. Close the parenthesis, divide it by the log of 5. They say round it to the nearest hundredth. So now I'm going to squiggle my equal signs because this is a rounded answer. 1.80. And like I said to you in class when we were in Chapter 7, <clears throat> if they say hundredth, two decimal places. You drop that zero, it's unfortunate, but you didn't round right. You'd lose a point. So don't lose a point over something silly like that. Letter B has 4 to the x is equal to 100. So again, you apply the log on 4 to the x and the log on 100. And you get x times the log of 4 is equal to the log of 100. Divide out this log of 4. Notice I don't go near the calculator until I've completed all the algebra steps. Because there's no need to. Now you can type in the log of 100 divided by the log of 4. Rounding to the nearest hundredth, you should get 3.32. And letter C is the same process, so I'm going to let you try letter C yourself. When you get to a problem like number 3, it gets a little bit more involved to look at it. You have 6 raised up to the x plus 3 is equal to 50. It looks more involved, but it's really not. It's just like this. This guy is the entire exponent. So when you say the log of 6 to the x plus 3 is equal to now the log of 50, what happens is this comes down in front. So now you have x plus 3 log of 6 is equal to the log of 50. Now we're going to divide by the log of 6. At this point, you're going to want to keep this number on your calculator because it's going to be a long number. So when I type in the log of 50 and I divide it by the log of 6, 
I get 2.18334611. I am not going to round that to the very end. That's real important. We don't round this to the very end. So we have 2.18334611. And this is now equal to, when this drops down, we don't need the parentheses anymore because we're not multiplying it by anything anymore. So now we're going to minus 3 from both sides. And that's why you always leave everything on the calculator. Now just hit minus 3, and you get negative. So our answer is now a negative answer, negative 0. Point now we can round to the nearest hundredth. It's 8166. The one looking behind at a 6 gives us negative 0.82. So there. The work didn't change. It just got a little longer because you had an expression here. And let's take a look at letter B. Letter B doesn't look all that pretty. And again, if you take your time, don't get intimidated. You have 1.03 raised up to the x divided by 2 minus 5. There's my exponent. And this is equal to 2. So again, they're making it look super scary to you. But try, try not to get intimidated by the look of the problem. Again, we put a log on both sides. And this exponent comes down in front. So now I have x divided by 2 minus 5 times the log of 1.03 is equal to the log of 2. And I'm going to divide by the log of 1.03. This is going to cancel. And when this comes down, I have x divided by 2 minus 5. And now I have the log of 2 divided by the log of 1.03. I get... 23.44977 and I'm just going to round the 7 to an 8 because I'm out of room on my board but I'm keeping it on my calculator and I'm going to do that because I'm going to add 5 to both sides and I have x over 2 now is going to be equal to 28 Point four four nine, and this was 7, 7, and on and on. Opposite of division is now multiplication. I have to now multiply by 2 to cancel. And over here, this guy's got to get multiplied by 2. So again, that's why I keep stuff. I never clear my calculator. And I multiply this by 2. I have... 56.899, again, rounding to two decimal places, gives me 56.90. Take your time. Again, you should be stopping this video. You should be um, trying the problems on your own and seeing what you can do.